The following is a production of the School of Telecommunications at Ohio University. Some of the excerpts from Nicaraguan television you will see suffer from reception difficulties. All were originally in color. Their inclusion here is due to the importance of content over technical considerations. Located in the heart of Central America, Nicaragua is a society in transition. Nicaragua is a society in revolution. It is a society caught among the legacy of a brutal dictatorship, the pain of violent armed struggle, and the travails of a wrenching and continuing social revolution. In this program, we will be looking at the ways mass media are used and misused in the revolutionary context of today's Nicaragua. We will explore the political uses of television, radio, newspapers, and to a lesser extent, murals and posters. In June of 1984, Ohio University sponsored a research seminar to Nicaragua to study the various ways that mass media are used in political communication. This visit occurred at the time of frequent and often devastating attacks on Nicaraguan civilians by counter-revolutionary forces or Contras. These Contras are funded and armed by the United States, and they terrorize the countryside from bases in neighboring Costa Rica and Honduras. Even a simple task like plowing a field now requires two people, one to plow, the other to stand guard. This small town of Ocotal, just a few miles from the Honduran border, has witnessed the destruction the war brings. Here in the early hours of June 1, 1984, heavily armed counter-revolutionary troops attacked sites of strategic importance. Targets included an electric plant, a granary, a lumber mill, and the offices of various grassroots organizations. The Contras paid particular attention to the town's radio station. América, desde el Río Grande a las Malvinas, tiene su señal amiga en Radio Sandino, que transmite desde Nicaragua, patria del general de hombres. In the battle, the Contras killed the radio staff and the station was knocked off the air. Within 24 hours, the townspeople had the station operating again in makeshift quarters. This incident points out the strategic importance of mass communication in revolutionary struggle. Radio is the primary source of information for most of the developing world. In Okotal, radio serves to inform, unite, and encourage a people under siege. This makes radio a threat to counter-revolutionary forces who seek to undermine and destroy the source of this mobilizing influence. In Okotal, invasion and oppression by foreign-backed troops are nothing new. This mural commemorates the fight by the population against a U.S.-backed regime in the 1920s. U.S. planes destroyed the town in the first wide-scale aerial bombing 
of the civilian population in history. Part of the mural depicts Augusto Cesar Sandino, an historical figure equivalent to our own George Washington, who led the struggle for a Nicaragua free from foreign domination. Murals are used across the country to express political ideology through art. This mural's image of a rich Uncle Sam supporting a greedy, animal-like general is reflected in murals throughout Nicaragua, as is the figure of death wrapped in the stars and stripes. The images stand as a sad testimony to the role the U.S. has played in Nicaraguan history since the 1800s, as we see in this health ministry promotion on immunizations. Our country continues to be invaded by imperialism. But an organized people guarantees its health and defense. Our children, future builders of the revolution, should be protected. Let's vaccinate everyone on the 6th for polio and smallpox. In the vaccination clinics, we will conquer polio and smallpox. Let's all take our vaccinations for polio and smallpox. Let's all conquer our enemies in the vaccination clinics. Jornadas Populares de Salud. In 1979, the whole of Nicaraguan society, led by the Sandinista Front for National Liberation, or FSLN, revolted against the brutal excesses of the dictator Anastasio Somoza. The Somoza family had run Nicaragua as a personal fiefdom for over four decades with the backing of the United States. Before the Somozas, U.S. Marines had often been used to guarantee that friendly regimes controlled the country. At the time of the triumph in 1979, Somoza controlled some 35% of the national economy. This included numerous radio and television transmitters, which immediately became property of the new government headed by the FSLN. When Somoza collapsed, the government ended up with 16 radio stations, two television stations, and one newspaper. The revolution was a long and bloody process, but often media-related events contributed to the course of the uprising. Somoza lost the support of the Nicaraguan people when newspaper editor Pedro Joaquin Chamorro was assassinated by the National Guard. Chamorro was an active opponent of the dictatorship and courageously fought Somoza in the pages of his newspaper, La Prensa. His death unified all sectors of Nicaraguan society against Somoza and signaled the beginning of the end of the dictator's rule. Today, a vigorous opposition press continues to operate under the banner of La Prensa. However, the paper daily faces censorship from the government and competition from two other daily newspapers, Nuevo Diario and Barricada. Nuevo Diario was founded by disgruntled former workers of La Prensa, who left that newspaper en masse when it took an editorial turn to the right. Nuevo Diario usually supports the government with some critical viewpoints. Barricada, on the other hand, is the official organ of the Sandinista Front and supports most government decisions. Ironically, all three newspapers are run by members of Pedro Joaquin Chamorro's family. As members of the opposition press, La Prensa's editors feel the democratic and liberal goals of the revolution have been betrayed by the increasingly left-leaning leaders. Even under the best of circumstances, La Prensa is heavily censored. According to its editors, about 20% of its content is stricken by the censor at the Ministry of Interior. Even factual stories, such as the account of what happened at the Akatal radio station, are cut because they presumably show the success of the counter-revolution. The paper's copy is submitted to the censor each morning at 11 and is supposed to be returned by early afternoon. 
On this date in June 1984, Barry Cotta carried a story charging a local priest with supplying guns to anti-government factions. The story was big news in all the media. Sandonista TV had aired a secret videotape allegedly showing the priest making deals for gun shipments. Cuando se dirige a una reunión conspirativa con el jefe militar del supuesto frente interno del FDN, Pedro Hernán Espinosa Sánchez, alias El Pez. La Prensa, as voice for the opposition, including the hierarchy of the Catholic Church, wanted to run Archbishop Obando y Bravo's denial of the priest's involvement. La Prensa staff waited until late in the afternoon for the copy to return from the censors. The presses were ready and silent, with all pages but the first and last already set up. Suddenly, the copy appeared, and new front and last pages were stripped and set in place. The headline, Archbishop Comments on Accusation, was not as strong as La Prensa would like to have published, and the paper was very late to distribution. The dilemma for the government is to censor or not to censor. If it censors, it betrays the democratic ideals of its own revolution. If it doesn't censor, it risks compromising its national security. The country is in a perpetual state of readiness in the face of a wartime situation. In a sense, it's damned if it does censor and damned if it doesn't. This demonstration outside of La Prensa was a reaction to what government supporters see as the newspaper's distortion of events and its tacit approval of counter-revolutionary activities. Were the demonstrators paid government agitators, as La Prensa claimed, or were they truly students and bank employees interested in a unified Nicaragua? Not all media channels suffer from intense pressures and overt censorship. Radio stations in Nicaragua are run by religious organizations, private businesses, as well as by the government. Their programming is diverse and the content is largely self-regulated. From Managua, capital of Free Nicaragua, Radio Sandino from the heart of America. And also, the people of Nicaragua should be informed about the projects of the evangelical community as well as the other churches. The elections are rights won by Nicaraguans through their struggle. The boys of Nicaragua, the red and black, signal from Managua. Capital de la Patria. Capital of the liberated homeland. Chief of the Sandinista Popular Army's political command, Commander Hugo Torres, expressed that the CIA is trying to introduce in Nicaraguan territory as many former Sista guards as possible. The terrorist organization, CIA, is planning to assassinate as many Nicaraguan peasants as possible. Nicaraguan TV is pretty astonishing to many outside observers. The two national channels broadcasting from Managua and repeated throughout the country support the FSLN, much to the objection of the government's political opposition.
there is an amazing mix of propaganda, revolutionary ideology, and escapism on Nicaraguan TV. Sí, amigos. Amigos nuestros, les invitamos a ver hoy, después de nuestro largometraje, un musical a cargo del popular Rafael Marto Sánchez. Mi nombre, Automán. El auto fantástico. Actuación estelar de David Hasselhoff. Para hoy jueves a las 8 y 45 de la noche presentaremos los capítulos de acción de El Auto Fantástico. Vean hoy jueves por Canal 6. Before the revolution, virtually no television production was done by Nicaraguans themselves. Now the government is making an attempt to increase local production, currently at 40% of total television. Programs are produced by SSTV or by the grassroots organizations who may pay SSTV to run their show. Particular emphasis is being placed on recapturing lost Nicaraguan traditions. Estamos a las puertas del verano. Recordemos a Sososca. In The Plumed Serpent, produced on location, the narrator recalls an ancient legend of treason and deception relevant to current problems in Nicaragua. On the quiet waters of Volcano Asososca, on four rows of huge rocks, there was a beautiful temple. One day, the tribal elders arrived in fragile canoes, and left offerings of gold, silver, and precious stones for the gods. One old warrior, whom everyone respected, was guarding the temple. One afternoon, Princess Isayani, daughter of Prince Mekicheri, brought some Spanish conquistadors to the temple, believing that they were children of the sun. The guardian of the temple, who did not understand the deception to which Isayana had fallen victim, killed the princess. The white conquistadors only wanted to capture the temple's treasures and fired their muskets, killing him. Nicaraguan television also is attempting to create a dialogue between the country's leaders and the people. One of Nicaragua's favorite programs is called Face the People, shot entirely with remote video equipment. In the mud and rain near the Honduran border, members of the national government answer questions from civilians and military recruits. How can you help us? As you know, our mothers come to see us where we are stationed, and it is very difficult for them to get here. And besides, this area is very dangerous, and our parents run a risk coming here. What we want to ask is how can you arrange transportation so that our mothers can come and see us here. They don't have the resources to come, and besides, it costs a lot. The usual method that has developed, as you know, is bringing the family in rented vehicles. The real difficulty we have encountered is that it is impossible for all the families to come on the same day. Besides, it's a waste of time traveling. So we have arranged a different way to get your families here. 
they will come to the training centers and we hope that each of you will have at least a couple visits each month. Local entertainment productions are also very popular on Sandinista TV. Here on this corner is produced in a different neighborhood each program. Local people participate in the contests and musical segments, and the production becomes a real community event. Estudiante de enfermería, ¿verdad? Muy bien. ¿Su nombre, por favor? Verónica Canales. ¿Auxiliar de enfermería? Sí. Verónica Canales. ¿Su nombre, por favor? Josefa Ríos Mendoza. Josefa Ríos Mendoza, también auxiliar de enfermería. También. Bien, al sonar el gorgorito. Listas, echando tercia. Pónganse, colóquense. Ahí está el juez. Ahí está la enfermera Cruz. Suena el gorgorito. Va jugando. Duro, no se deje la niña. No se deje. Una caída. Al sonar el gorgorito, listas. But even entertainment can have a political message. Ten seconds. Fifteen seconds. Twenty seconds. Veinticinco. Parece que el compañero Jesús Nicaragua es el que va a la cabeza. Treinta. Treinta y cinco segundos. Eh, pero la compañera también parece que 40. va... La compañera también va detrás de él. Cuarenta y cinco. Cincuenta. Vamos a ver, brindémosle un aplauso. Sí. Un aplauso fuerte. 55. 60. 65. In developing nations, few people own a television set. Children, families, and neighborhoods often view television in a group setting, which makes it more of a social event. Para construir la patria No necesito más que el sol Y el sol me has dado en cada parte de vos Para construir la patria No necesito más que amor Y amor me han dado tus manos Tus manos revolución since 1979, dramatic changes have shaped the face of life in Nicaragua. The country has made great progress in improving the lives of the majority of its people. All of this has come about through citizen participation, aided by the media of mass communication. Nicaraguan media are remarkably pluralistic, 
particularly for a nation at war. Church radio stations, political party newspapers, and governmental television are all engaged in a war of ideas. To be sure, the Sandinista media predominate. This corresponds to the continued support that the Sandinista revolution has among the people. But opinion is deeply divided. And that division is apparent particularly in radio and newspapers. In such a diversified media system, it is no surprise that contradictions arise. Revolutionary messages are juxtaposed with the most escapist entertainment. A government committed to popular democracy feels forced to censor the opposition. Alien foreign values exist side by side with deep-seated traditional images. Nicaragua, a country in revolution, a country in transition, a country struggling to find its way out of a decades-long legacy of dictatorship and repression, a country struggling to build a nation at peace, despite the daily realities of a continuing war. It is within this context that the use of political communication in revolutionary Nicaragua must be understood. Organizado el corazón para vencer. 